Three, two, and one. <laughs> uh, some days I'm never ready. There you go. Oh, I am now? Yeah, you oh, are. Of course I am. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm having one of those days. I, apparently, I forgot to turn the volume down on this thing again. There we go. Good heavens. I hope everybody's having a great day. It's, um... <laughs> I got a dog to deal with. You do. <laughs> you have the con. I have the con. I'm a, apparently I'm in control, but I, I would question that. Um, I'm going to sound a little clogged. I, I a little bit like gravel Gertie today. I um, ended up spending some time with uh, a medical professional this week. I had an asthma attack the other day. Um, and the only time I have issues with, with asthma is because of an allergy, but I hadn't really been anywhere, but my allergies are just driving me crazy. And I ended up having an asthma attack the other day, not a serious one, but enough that I had to you know, go and get a new puffer. So I've been using that according to doctor's requirements for the last couple of days. So it's a little better. It's a little better, but I do sound a little congested and I do sound a little gravelly. So bear with me. <laughs> please <laughs> so today we're going to be uh working on this fun piece this is letters from home I called it that because it's a postage stamp and it's a bright and sunny and it just it just reminded me of letters from home something we don't often do anymore is is write a simple handwritten letter to send to loved ones and family and friends um so this one kind of I don't know, it just hit me with a little touch of nostalgia, I guess. So that is what we're going to be doing today is this wonderful sunflower in the shape of a postage stamp. I really like working with this type of thing and I love painting sunflowers. They're just so bright and sunny and happy. So we're going to have a little bit of fun painting sunflowers. But before we get on to that, I want to tell you about our giveaways today. Um, we have something a little bit special. I've decided I'm going to give away a couple of kits uh, for an upcoming project. Um, you haven't seen it yet. So um, it's going to be a surprise for, for the three of you that win. Plus, we're throwing in a nice little set of Dynasty Black Gold brushes. And uh, we also have some goodies from Tombow. So the kits are going to include the printed color pattern, the stencil required, and the surface. So the value of the three giveaways today, individually, is about $50. So uh, all you have to do to get in on the giveaways today is uh, quite simply just hit all the buttons. Hit the follow button on the Tracy Mora Live page. Um, join us on the YouTube channel by hit by hitting the big sub red subscribe button. We always like to have people join us there. And uh, uh, like, follow, and uh, join us in the chat. That's the big thing. And then Renee can copy and paste everybody's names from the list in the chat. And uh, he'll pop that onto the wheel and three names will be drawn. And at the end of today's live, three of you are going to win a pretty nice little giveaway. So that is our giveaway for today. Um, I did have happy mail this week. I got some wonderful cards um, from several people. And I uh, just wanted to pop in and say thank you to Sandy Barton. Um, I know it's it's running late, but I got a Valentine's Day card from you today. <laughs> so we know how well the Postal Service is working. Um, so yes, thank you, Sandy Barton. I appreciate you, my dear. Mwah. And it's so sweet to get mail. I love getting mail. It's fun. So if you guys are ready to get started on this fun little piece called Letters from Home, so am I. Look at that. Seamless. I did it myself without <laughs> making a mess. That's a miracle. So the surface that we're working on is the six by six postage stamp. And it comes, the surface actually comes with the little two inch butterfly that we're going to paint to go along with this. And we have our line drawing. We're also going to use a bunch of stamps and some stencils and um, some really bright, colorful, uh, really bright colors, I should say. And uh, we're going to have a pile of fun painting this piece. So if you haven't seen it, this is Letters from Home. I really love the colors in this piece. Very bright, very sunny. Oops, I'm missing a color. Hello. I love these new colors from Decor. I decided to use them because uh, they're just a lot of fun. 
and the great shading and highlighting colors. So just to recap some of the colors that you're going to need. Uh, we're going to start with warm white and of course Bahama blue and then uh, or aqua sky or uh, crystal blue whatever color you want and baby duck. I'm really loving loving this color this one from from uh, Decor this new one baby ducks a great yellow and then of course I have to have my saffron yellow because it's that really vibrant intense yellow that I like so much and then uh, tea berry you could use um, orange flame for the shading in fact I think that's what I used in the pattern but um, I'm going to use a little bit of tea berry just to show you how versatile that color is. And of course, we have some antique green for our leaves and a little bit of margarita. I'm going to throw in a little bit of this new leaf as well because I'm really in love with that color. And uh, we're going to use some plantation pine. And I can't paint anything without some asphaltum because <laughs> that's just how I roll. And then, of course, we need some lamp black. And some stamps. And of course, you know I have to have my cancellation stamps. So I've got, oops, got my script stamp and a pile of cancellation stamps because I love my cancellation stamps. And then the stencil we're going to use is a postage stencil, and it's. If you're looking for it, it's M229. It's probably one of my favorite stencils. I use it a lot. I just have to find it now. There it is. M229 is one of my favorite stencils. I love this cancellation stamp. Who knew? I'm just looking to see who all is here. Marion Struckness. Hello, Marion. And Debbie Visser. Hello, sweetie. And Linda Grass. Hi, Keiko. How are things in California? Um, hi, Linnell. It is, you know, it is such a gloomy day. We're at the same. We started out sunny and we're in for a miserable day. And Kathy Pruitt from Grants Pass. I love that area. It's so pretty. Fell in love with it when I was out there. Robert Pearson. Hello, Robert. And Cheryl Bentley. And Carol w Karen Wilson from Meaford, Ontario. Meaford. I'm, I'm familiar with Meaford. <laughs> we have been there and done that. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of Bahama Blue. Maybe if I can find it. Bahama Blue. I went to my paint cabinet the other day to get a new bottle of Bahama Blue because <sighs> what I have in here is very very small amount and uh, discovered that I am out I don't have any more so a little bit of Bahama blue and I'm going to use my fugly brush to paint this taped off section now while I'm doing this I'll tell you what I did to prepare this piece I've got two coats of warm white on this postage stamp and then I put a little bit of Joe Sonia's fast dry glaze into my paint so that it would brush out smoothly and then I let it dry and then I put on a second coat and then once it was completely dry I taped off a half inch border all the way around the outside so a half inch from the outer edge of that stamp we want to create a white border. So I'm going to dry this real quick and put on one more coat. Now this is the fun part because it's going to look horrendous for a little bit because we're going to have so many things on here but um, it will begin to look so much better fairly quickly. Kind of like slamming your hand against a wall. It feels good when you stop. We're going to put all of this color on and a bunch of stamping. 
beforehand before we take all this tape off so that we have a nice clean border everywhere. And with a little bit of luck, it didn't bleed when I was brushing this on. It's a little bit of luck. So there we go. So I've got two coats of Bahama Blue. I'm gonna let this dry really well. Da -da -da. Good heavens. <laughs> there we go. Almost dry. Eh, a little bit of white peeking through. I'll just brush a little bit of Bahama over top there just to make sure everything is covered. <laughs> I like this kind of background. It's an easy one to do. And it gives a little bit of interest, even in a small space. I think it's a really great idea to, to get stuff in the background. Oh my goodness. Hello. you've seen paradise there's no going back <laughs> I'm sorry I've been to Mayford why do they call them cancellation stamps um, there was a time because actual postage actually has a dollar value or a face value in order to prevent people from reusing them at the cost of the postal service they would use a stamp that had, you know, U.S. Postal Service or Canadian Postal Service or what have you um, in it to have it would show the date that it was posted, the date that it was sent. Um, we have something similar now, but um, th that was why. It was to prevent people from reusing post stamps. That's why they're called cancellation stamps. Once I finish this design, I should have a sunny day in my studio. I agree. It's, it's always sunny in my studio. I have these great big lights in here. <laughs> so it's very sunny. So I have um, a script stamp. Since it is a letter from home, I'm going to use a script stamp for this. I think I've got my other one. Hang on. Oh, here we go. So I've got my script stamp on a block. And we're going to, now this one is not quite legible. And chances are that if I put it upside down, somebody will notice. I will, I know that. So I'm going to stamp, so it is upside down, <laughs> of course it is. Couldn't tell. There we go. I don't think it's that big a deal, to be honest. But So I'm just going to fill up my background with script. The nice part is that you can fill it up. It's okay to fill it up. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be putting stuff on top of it. So, so I've got script covering. And then, um, of course, I need some cancellation stamps because it's me. I like my cancellation stamps. And I've got a nifty one here. This one is, I'm trying to, from Milan. I think this is a neat one. So I've got one from Milan. I'm going to put several of these around my surface. And then I've got this really neat one. It's sort of an oval shape that I really like. I just think that this is a fun way to 
do things. So I think four is plenty on there. I've got a little teeny tiny one here that I think I will try because I can. So these little cancellation stamps, I mean, there's so many of them. A lot of dollar stores actually have these um, and a variety of Tim Holtz has a bunch um, and script stamps you can get almost anywhere. I love them. I use them for all sorts of things. So I've got that all done. I'm going to make sure that this ink is dry and then I'm going to add a little color to the outside edge. I'm going to do that with a little bit of fresh glue, just a little. I just like the way it looks. I think that's the thing. I like the way it looks. So I don't need a ton of paint. When I need my, I'm using a half inch angle. A little bit of Joe Sonia's on the brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Prussian blue. I'm going to blend it out really well. Like so. There we go. And I'm going to just put a little float of this along the edges. Go right over the edge of the tape. Doesn't have to be perfect. Da -da -da. Now, remember what I said, it's going to look a little sloppy for a bit. Okay, am I using uh, ink to stamp with? Yes, I'm just using one of these. This is a stays on stamp pad. I, this tends to be my go-to because it's I've never had an issue with this. Working with so many different mediums and so many glazes and things, this really, it doesn't move. And as long as it's dry, it's fine. It, I've never had any issues with it. And I really like working with this one because it's so close to asphaltum. It's a dark brown. No, I will never say anything has to be perfect, least of all me. Um, so I've got a little bit of that Prussian blue in there. These stamps, I don't sell stamps on my site for a couple of reasons. One, um, I have to buy so many and in such a volume that I simply don't have the space to store them all. So um, if you're looking for really good script stamps, one of my favorites is from Tim Holtz. And those are available, if I'm not mistaken, Sandy's got a few on her website. Um, any one of those, I, I found some of these on Amazon. And this one was actually part of a larger stamp. I just cut it in half to stick it on to make it more functional um, for me, for what I do. So, and these stamp pads are available at Michael's. They're available at Hobby Lobby. You can get them almost anywhere. And they're actually a very affordable and they last forever. I've had this one for two years and I still haven't refilled it. So I have a collection of, <laughs> of all these funky things. So I'm going to make sure this is good and dry and then we can um, have that ooh ah moment that I like so much. I love that ooh ah moment whenever you take the tape off and everything looks so much better. So now when you're removing tape, I've watched people do this where they just rip it off. Um, fold your tape back onto itself and pull it. Never pull up, just pull back on it. The reason for that is that it will produce less surface tension. And, oh, I can't get that off. Say 45 degree angle, pull back. Look at that clean line, not even any. So when you do it this way, you re drastically reduce the possibility that you're going to pull the base color off. Oh, a little bleeding. And that way you don't have to go back and touch up. 
You don't have to fix things. I hate fixing things. They don't have to. Look at this. So there we go. So I've only got one little spot right down here that needs a little touch up, but it's such an easy thing. Just a little bit of white, just push it up to the line. There we go, look at that. Done. So whenever you're pulling tape off of a freshly painted or base coated surface, just remember to fold the tape back on itself and pull it that way. Reduces the surface tension and it drastically reduces the chance that one, you're going to tear all that fresh paint or that you're going to pull paint off of your base coat. And it just reduces the amount of touch-ups that you have to do. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'm going to just dry this really cute. Really quick, really cute. I don't know where that came from. So we have our background. So I have my line drawing printed. So I'm going to position that onto my surface. And I'm going to tape it in place. It drives me nuts when I don't tape things in place and then the line drawing shifts when you're trying to transfer things on. I can make sure I got the holes in the right place. I did that the other day, put it in the wrong, taped the line drawing on, transferred it on and then realized that I had put the line drawing upside down. And the, the holes were on the, supposed to be at the top were now on the bottom. So yeah, just take the time to check. So I'm going to use, I want to check and see if my white is going to work. Nope. I'm going to use a little bit of gray graphite. If white is too hard to see on that background, which it's going to be a toss up. I'm going to use a little bit of gray graphite and my red gel pen. I swear by these red gel pens for a couple of reasons. They, um, I can always see where I've been. So fewer chances of me missing a leaf, missing a petal. So much simpler. <laughs> I'm a fan of these sunflower. I love sunflowers. So one of my favorites. There's just something happy about them. Especially after a long, wet, dismal winter. I've just been looking forward to some bright sunny sunflowers, some nice colorful flowers. I don't know about you, but we have had a, it seemed like winter, although it hasn't been a harsh winter. I have to say that we haven't had a ton of snow. We hardly had any snow at all. Um, but it has been a very long one, very dreary and gray and just not a really pretty one. We usually have very pretty winters here. This was not one of them. So everybody has been really looking forward to some sunnier weather. And of course now it's April. So we are getting April and March weather right now. We have precious little snow left. There's, you know, just a little from the other day. Um, most of the, most of it is gone. But um, we do have a little bit left. But we had horrendous rain yesterday. Just horrendous amounts of rain. So it just poured here yesterday. So one of the things that I did when I was painting this piece, um, <laughs> and I do it from time to time, and then I don't think about it until after the fact, I actually added a petal here. And then one small one here. 
it just, to me, it felt like it needed a couple of those little petals, you know, those little baby petals that come out of there. And so I just tucked them in, even though they're not in the line drawing, I just went ahead and tucked them in because it's mine. I can do whatever I want. I just like that little extra sometimes. So I've got, now here's the thing. Am I going to be able to see it? Yes, I can see it. So I have my line drawing on. Pretty, pretty. Now this piece has a lot of yellow and yellow over blue is um, a little problematic it, or at least it can be. Um, so I like to make sure that I put a little bit of white down just to ensure that I get decent coverage with the yellow. I don't need to fill everything in completely, but we don't want the yellow to have to fight with that blue background. So I like to put a layer of white in. It's just a little bit of thinned warm white. And if you can, leave a little space between the petals so that you can see where they are. And I love, 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 love having the flower overlap the border. I just think it works very, very well. It adds to that perception of depth. I like the composition of this piece. So that little bit of white, as I said, doesn't need to be fully opaque. You just want to get a base down so that the yellow isn't competing with that blue. And it makes it a little easier. Don't forget those little petals that we just, you know, arbitrarily threw in just for the hell of it. Easy peasy. So fun. So I really fell in love with this surface. Um, I've got about six designs sitting here. <laughs> And I forget who it was, but somebody asked me to do an iris. So I have one with an iris. So I'm, I've got that one sitting on my painting table ready to go. I just have to sit down and finish painting it. But then I had one of those moments the other day where you were just suddenly inspired by something that I saw. And the next thing I know, I've, I'm painting eggs and milk bottles. I have no idea what possesses me sometimes. So I got those done, got the patterns written up. They're all ready on the site because I'm just, I needed to get them done and I just love them. I've been having entirely too much fun in the studio the past few weeks. Okay. Oops, missed a petal. There we go. So we have petals. Now I've got to get the center of this flower in. It helps, <laughs> helps with placement. I'm going to fill in the center with a little bit of asphaltum. I love sunflowers, they're fun. Um, but the center is kind of sloppy, kind of messy. Da, da, da. It's one of those neatness doesn't count things in here. Just getting that shape in is all that we really need to worry about. Ta -da. So we have a shape. Now I'm trying to see 
where the chat went. Where did you go? Irises probably won't be up for us for a few more weeks. <laughs> Creative brains cannot be explained. I have ceased to even try to explain mine. <laughs> Blue bonnets and Indian paintbrushes would be nice. Um, I just did bluebells. That's next week, actually. I love bluebells. I thought that would be a fun one. So we have a stem. I'm going to base coat that with a little bit of antique green. It will probably take a couple of coats to get this to cover well, but that's all right. I have been painting and designing like a mad woman. Um, I think part of it is every time I get a new surface, I think I gotta try and figure out, you know, some other fun thing I can do with it instead of just one thing. Um, so I've had a little bit of fun. I've got a really adorable new surface uh, coming up. I did a couple of, there's another printable coming up too. Been having way too much fun with it. Okay. What did I just miss? Oh, I missed a spot here. There we go. I'm going to let that dry. I'll probably put another coat on because it's a little sketchy. But it really doesn't take too long to fill this in. So the color we're going to use for our sunflowers is this one. This is baby duck. Whenever duck work puts out new colors, I try to see how they're going to work for me. Um, simply because it's a new color is not necessarily going to make them great if they don't fit in with your tastes or with your style, but um, I really love yellows when I'm painting. They just, they provide wonderful light to things. And they just make things so much brighter and sunnier. Yellow is a great color to put into a painted piece because it just pops the eye, brings the eye. So the eye jumps to it, which is really nice. I'm trying to find my round brush. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. And I really love it when they come out with a nice yellow. This one is really nice. It's a nice bright, it's not a high yellow, like a high toned yellow, but it is just this really nice, soft, delicate, really a lovely yellow to work with. Easy peasy. So all of those petals that got that coat of white, that one single coat of white is going to get us a, a coat of that baby duck. Lovely yellow. And you can shade this with orange flame. I used orange flame in the pattern. I mean, you can use almost anything. You could use a deeper yellow. I like the orange. I like the, the reddish tones for sunflowers. I just think it just gives them a little extra something. It's just really nice heat. And there's a nice pop of color with that little smack of orange in the center toward the center. It just makes everything look better. 
but as I was playing this week, I was playing with a lot of the new colors. One of the things that I discovered was tea berry. That's this, not that a pretty color. It looks like a coral, kind of. It's very reddish, though, when you start working with it. It's very reddish, but oh my goodness, does it look great with yellow. So I decided I was going to um, shade a couple of things with it this week. And oh my gosh, so fun. Yellow is a happy color. Indeed it is. Hi, Kathy. It is a very happy color. Now, you notice how I'm filling in these petals. I pull all the strokes from the center out to the tip. And that way, if there's brush marks, they work in your favor. There's nothing worse than trying to hide brush marks because they are directional and our eyes are trained to follow directions. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. I keep losing the chat window. There we are. This is a very simple design. There's nothing elaborate about it. It relies almost exclusively on that background. It's a simple composition, so you could move this to almost any surface very easily. You could elongate it, add a longer stem, throw in a couple more leaves. You could put it on almost anything. And I think that's one of the reasons that I, I prefer a simple uh, design because it makes it a bit more flexible and a little bit more usable in other ways it's frustrating when you find a design you really love and there's no not an easy way to alter it to suit a surface of your choice so i like being able to create a composition that makes it simple for people to move it to something else especially in this day and age I mean, we ship everything these days. I wish we didn't. I wish we could go right to our local craft or hobby store and find it. But unfortunately, that is not the way it is. So I've been trying to find surfaces and whatnot that are easily obtained um, and affordable. I, I like the idea of things being affordable. And at the same time, offer something more than just a square or a rectangle or it you know something with a little more interest so i'm just about done i'm going to pop in these little pet remember those little petals that i was referring to I, I just love having those there just makes the flower a little more interesting oh missed one this one here yeah. There we go. Not a complex design by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. You're not late, you're fine. Hello, Anne. I'm glad somebody's getting nice weather. We had a blue sky till about half an hour ago and now it's clouding over again. Um, we had just a horrendous storm here yesterday. Heavy rain, high winds. Fortunately, the roof stayed on. It's all good. So I'm going to grab my antique green again. I want to get another coat in this. It's just not quite solid enough. Um... If you haven't got antique green, lush green will work. Avocado will work. We just need a green base. And I think this will do it. 
this time around. So that one coat was not quite enough. And it looked a little sketchy. There we go. Usually, I only go with one coat. Usually. Um, today, I just... I probably should have put some white underneath it, but... Oh, well. There we go. And let's see. Who else is in here today? Hi, Tara. Yeah, that weather that you got, it was that what they call a Texas low. That's what we got yesterday. It was pretty messy. Hey, Char. Hi, Billy. Sunny in Arizona and 72. That's a nice temperature. I could do with some 72. <laughs> 72 degrees would be perfect. As long as it didn't go any higher than that, it would be perfect. So I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit more asphaltum in here. I love this, just sort of slap it in there. Not too worried. But I do want a fairly, fairly opaque. Doesn't have to be solid, but fairly. And you're going to be looking at the sunflower going, I can still see the stamps right through it. That's okay. It's all good. It doesn't matter. I can see the stamps through it. I kind of like that, personally. So, I have my center based with asphaltum. And now we're going to have a little bit of fun with this flower. I'm going to dry that. Now, I've got a little bit of lamp black. So, we're going to shade the center first. A little bit. I don't need a lot. And my angled shader. And just a little bit of lamp black. We're going to put a float down here on the bottom of our flower of the center. Just in here and in behind and under those little forward petals, these, this little cluster of three here. And it's going to come up the side like so, just a little. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a divot in the middle. I'm just going to put a little C-shaped float right there. Doesn't have to be strong. Well, you'll see when it's dry that it's not a super strong float. But it is just enough to indicate that there's a little bit of a divot there in the center. So the next color I'm going to use is black green or plantation pine, whatever you've got on hand. It just needs to be a dark green, a nice dark green. So plantation pine or black green, any one of those will work just fine for this. I'm going to blend that out. And this is our shading color. I'm going to bring that green. It would help if I actually got some paint in the brush here. Hello. There we go. I'm going to bring that green up underneath those petals and on the back side of that stem. Just like that. And then there's these little cluster here. We're going to put a shadow there as well. And on the top of this leaf here. Remember, this is up underneath that sunflower, so it's not getting any light. And then there's a center vein there. 
a nice little float on the back side of that leaf under there So it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be neat and tidy. It's just going to give us that little bit of shading that we need. And you can deepen it. If you don't find that it's dark enough, you can come back in and deepen that shading. I like it quite dark because this flower is up over top of that leaf. So we're not seeing any of the detail in it, but we do need a good shadow in there. And we need one on the center vein as well. There we go. So I think, I think that will do. There we go. So we have our shading on our leaf. And again, I've lost the chat. I just keep going and checking in case somebody has a question that I don't see. So I'll dry this real quick. And then we're going to, I'm going to switch to a smaller angled shader. I'm going to switch to a 3 8. I like my little 3 8. This is a great little brush. Make sure this is well dry. Because I have a habit of putting my hand into wet paint these days. <laughs> my good heavens I have paint bottles everywhere here we go just looking for my Joe Sonia there so I'm going to use this tea berry I love this color and I struggled for a little bit kept sitting there looking at it going hmm how can I use this what can I use this for um, I even went and looked up tea berry to see what color it actually was, to see what inspired it. And it's a fruit from a type of mint, believe it or not. And it's quite an unusual color, but over top of yellow, it has this wonderful tone. So I'm shading down close to the center and in behind the other petals with this color. Remember what I said about keeping your chisel edge right on the surface? That's what gives you those nice smooth floats. And this is where that's important. Lovely, lovely color. I got it a little strong there, but that's all right. So pretty. It's a very rich corally orange I think if that makes any sense it has a, a very pretty coral tone to it a little on the pink side it reminds me a lot of um, watermelon slice it has there's a tone to it and so it's very very pretty gorgeous tone and then when we do this next step with this color or over for the sunflowers that tea berry is going to change just slightly and it it becomes almost electric which I just love I love that this color is so versatile and if you want to base coat with it it is a little on the transparent side so you have to do a little bit of prep before you base coat with it but that's all right but the, the color itself is incredibly versatile. 
and just a yummy. Gorgeous color. It is, it gives this flower that, um, that cranberry tone. If you've seen those beautiful sunflowers that sort of have that cranberry orangey red in the center, that's what this kind of creates is that beautiful rich red tone, which I just love. So I've got that in. That is my shading color. I'll tuck that in in a few more places. It's just so, so rich. And so so pretty and if you walk that color out it just it's yummy over top of that baby duck just yummy and it's quite a forgiving color I do have to fix this you can see that that petal is just sort of screaming out at you it's too dark but that's all right it's an easy fix it's paint So just shading my flowers. Look so cute. And then there's these two. Remember those little petals that we put at the front? Those need a shading too. And then we have this one. Such a yummy color. Easy peasy. Get all of those wonderful colors in there. Look at that. So I'm going to rinse out my brush here for a sec. Getting a little... Not getting the transition I want. Too much paint in the brush. There we go. Now, there are a few spots where I need to amp it up a little bit right there. Remember those two little petals that we tucked in? Now, I want to fix this one. We've all been right there where we've whoopsied on something and it got a little too dark. I'm taking a little bit of that base color, which is that baby duck, and I'm just putting a float of that right over top. Don't try to bury it. Um, but make it work for you. So I'm just putting a float of that baby duck over top of that dark painted spot. And so it subdued it drastically. So I'll dry it and then I can come back in with a weak float and then I can get what I want out of it. And then I'm going to show you something really cool. So there is our tea berry. I'm going to blend this out. I'm going to bring, come back in with a little float of that color, just a little less intense. Fixed. So I have my tea berry in. Now, if there's areas that you want to deepen, now is the time. You can go in with a little more tea berry and deepen a few things, should you choose to. But now that flower has this really nice orangey tone to it. And that's just done with the tea berry. So I'm going to take a little bit of asphaltum. And I want to deepen a few little areas, um, mainly under here. These little areas underneath, right here, where these petals overlap. Just like that. I'm just deepening them a little bit. This just helps give these flowers a little more depth. That does not mean that you have to go everywhere and deepen everything. It just means you're going to deepen them in a few little key locations. Just two 
ensure that you get that lift. There's some that are away from the sunlight, so you need to deepen them a little. And I like that little bit of asphaltum just deepens the color enough. So now we have a little more depth. And you can come back here. Remember these guys here to lift and separate. That's what I was looking for. Lift and separate. Use that little bit of asphaltum and see how it lifts and separates some of those petals a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot to be effective. You just need a little. So wherever you feel you need to make things a little darker, a little deeper, so that you get better, perhaps better separation of the petals or a little more definition, a little float of asphaltum will do that for you. Just make sure you thin it out. So that little bit of tea berry does wonders. And then when you deepen it with a little bit of asphaltum, now we've got some depth, a little more depth. Now I'm going to show you something. I love doing this because it has great wow factor. Anytime I look at this in the sunflower, although it has great color, it's a little subdued and I really want this flower to pop. So I'm going to use a little bit of saffron yellow. I love this color. This is like sunshine in a bottle. It has, it just has that life, that spark, that jump. So we're going to thin it out to a wash. Really thin, hang on a second so you can see what I'm doing. It's very thin, like water. I'm using a little bit of glaze. Um, you can use water if you don't have the glaze, that's fine. So I'm going to start with this leaf here, petal, and I'm going to put a wash of that saffron yellow over top. And look what it does. This leaf or petal suddenly becomes very vibrant. And all of that tea berry becomes this rich, hot orange. So you can just put a wash of that saffron yellow over top of everything. And look at that sunflower become so vibrant. Now, saffron yellow is extremely transparent. It's a difficult color to base coat with because of that, but... We have white down, we have yellow down, and then we have that tea berry and the asphaltum. So when I go in and I put a wash of the saffron over top, these petals just suddenly become very vibrant, very lively. And this is how you get that pop. So even all of those, that tea berry, those oranges, those browns, they are very lively and nice and rich. So we go from this sort of flat and, and mellow, soft yellow to this vibrant and intense petal. And you can do it with just a loose wash of saffron over top. And it's easy, it's an easy one to control. You don't have to work hard to do this. Just thin out your paint. And look at how, I love this. It's, to me, it's wow factor. It just makes everything jump. I'm having way too much fun with the new colors. And I'm very, very fond of that baby duck. I just, it's just such a lovely yellow. Just by itself, it's a lovely yellow, but it makes for such a great top coat, base coat for this technique, using these vibrant washes. So check it out. Here is our bright, vibrant 
lively sunflower. So I'm going to dry this real quick and then we're going to use a real simple technique to highlight these petals just a little. To me, I just think that that's so vibrant and I love that I can see the, the stamp through it. It just makes things so interesting. Easy peasy. So I've got a little bit of uh, warm white on my palette. I'm going to load that up and you can go around to a few of these petals. Not all of them. You don't need to do it to all of them. But mainly some of the forward facing ones. The ones that are in, in facing directly into the sun. Um, you can just put a little float of warm white out on the upper edge and the tip. Doesn't have to be much. I like it on the, especially these little ones in the middle. It just pulls a little of the sunlight towards the center of the flower. And it's just a little. We're not using a ton of it. And it is just a weak float. We're not using 10 tons. Little bit. So that little bit of warm white, all it does is just highlight a few of the petals. We don't need to have it everywhere. And it's just a little. Easy. There we go. So we're going to do a little bit on the center of the flower. Now, I have my little deer foot. This is a quarter inch deer foot. And I'm going to load it up with asphaltum. And I'm going to move the camera here so you can see what I'm doing there. And so I have a little bit of asphaltum in it. I'm going to pick up just a little of that baby duck on the tip of the brush just a little and I'm going to tap like that till I get them mixed and then I'm going to just stipple the top edge of the flower like so and I need a little more paint there we go didn't quite you can do this with a green if you want to. You can do it with yellow. It doesn't matter. We're just adding a little texture to the top of the flower. I don't want it to come screaming out at us. But it's just to add a little texture to the top of the flower. And then I'm going along the bottom of that C-shaped float that we put in. Like that. And a little bit in the center like so. We're just creating a little bit of texture. That's all we're doing. So it does not have to be perfect. I know you hear me say that all the time, but I do mean it. So little highlights. And you can bring it down because you can come back in and deepen that shading area on our flower. I'm going to soften that a little bit. I just got a little carried away. There we go. So all it does just softens that center. And yeah, Teresa, this is a quarter inch deer foot. And I like one with that is a, a blend 
of hair. I have a black gold quarter inch deer foot right here and I find them a little too soft. I don't get the texture that I want. Um, these are fabulous for working on like if you want really soft textures whatnot. Um, if you want something with a little more rough texture I like the stiffer. I like the stiffer deer foot. That's just a, it's a personal preference. There we go. So we have nice little texture. We're going to add to that with a little bit of you know, some tiny dip dots and whatnot. Is Puddin here? Miss Deb is here. So I've got my flower. Now I need my liner brush. Now I'm using a 10 aught extra long detail liner. And I'm going to take a little bit of that baby duck on my liner, which is a great color. I'm going to add just a little tiny touch of warm white to it, just to make it a little more opaque. That's all. Hi, Mace. <laughs> Mace just came down. She's going to wreak havoc. So we're going to add a little detail to the edges of these petals and to give them a little more depth. So I'm going to press down. <laughs> Just like that. So I'm using that liner and a little bit of that warm white in that sunny day. Maze is having a snack. Got a yogi butt. <laughs> you gave her a yogi butt? See, Renee hasn't abandoned us, guys. I think he's been watching on his phone. He's just had to deal with Mays this morning. Miss Mays had her spay last week. She's been a bit much this week. <laughs> Is it just going to work right away? I think it just froze on Facebook. Oh, it froze on hair, too. Oh, no. Oh, seriously? Yeah, just oh. the top-down camera. Crap. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, it froze. I don't know what happened, guys. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Renee's going to see what he can do. Bear with me, guys. He's, He's going to try and sort out that top down. down. <sighs> I need a haircut. <laughs> like every every time, time I look up and I see it on camera, I go, God, I need a haircut. Hi, cat. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can, can still, still hear me. me. We're, We're just waiting, waiting for, for the, the top-down camera. It is a good still shot, though. I have to... <laughs> Let's see. 
I don't know. Hey, I got my microphone to work too. Oh my. Look at me go. Let's try this. Look at you. Oh my god. There we go. Oh. Back to Ta da Ta da Yay, it worked. Okay. There's an echo now. My hair is beautiful. I'm not like mine Cindy, this just sort of happened. I can't take any credit for it. It just sort of happened. <laughs> so I'm just using that thinned yellow, with the warm white mix, to stroke in a few little detail lines. And the main purpose of them is just simply to define some of the petals and to create sort of a little bowl at the center on these petals here. I think she enjoys the yogi pot. Yeah. I can't say I'm enjoying it. It stinks. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that that's lamb meal for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Miss Miss Mees does like her food. Yeah, she's a bit of a piglet. Just a little. <laughs> She'll eat almost anything though. She's not a fussy pup. <laughs> she's not hard to feed, that's for sure. Hi, right, Karen. <laughs> what am I missing? Am I missing any questions? <laughs> Teresa or Kat, I thought my eyes froze. Our mic is echoing. Who's mic? Probably both of ours. Yeah. <laughs> I come in handy. Yeah, you know. Hmm? He does come in handy. Hi, Linda. So this part actually is a little time consuming, getting these little bordering lines in. Am I still, <laughs> am I still in time to get on the wheel? Yes, Lucinda, of course. <laughs> as long as Maze has something to occupy her brain, she's very good. Yeah. It's when she gets bored or anxious that she's a handful. Yeah. And she gets bored easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she gets bored very easily. <laughs> Usually that's about the time she goes up and steals my husband's socks. Or my socks. Or I your found socks. Three pairs of socks underneath Under your, my bed. Yeah. Three pairs. Yep. Well, at least she's taken them in pairs. Not all of them mine. No, I know. So Maze is doing better? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a little scare. She did have a, a bad case of seroma. Yep. And uh, it did rupture, sadly. But it ruptured for the the better, I guess. Yeah. It was just fluid buildup. Yeah. She she was not a happy puppy for a couple of days. So I think I've got one. I have two more to do here. Chip. I like this little bit because I can put a little flip at the tip of the petals, which I kind of like. I like that little detail in there. And it cleans up and sharpens some lines, but most importantly, it helps create some dimension in these front petals. So, I'm going to dry this real quick. Of course, when we start talking about mage, people want to see her. Of course, yeah. 
She's a handful. Yeah. She's an arm load. She's more than an arm load. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where's my gel pen? But she she did very well when, with that uh, runaway dog this morning. Good. A couple of growls and barks, but... That's excellent. So, this is a favorite thing. I absolutely love my gel pen. And I'm going to put a squiggly, scribbly line all the way around my center. Because I can. And I'm the boss of me. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> you do you and I'll do me. <laughs> so I like the gel pen. I just like how it adds a little extra. Because, you know, I'm all about a little extra. Just helps define the center of this a little bit. Makes things a little more interesting. You can do this with a liner brush if you prefer. I just, I like doing it with my gel pen. So, and there we go. We've got a little bit of detail in. It froze on YouTube. There's been some weird things. Oh, with she must not be live. She might be a little bit behind. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can... Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, you can go back in time during yep. the live. Yep. There we go. So, and there's a few little details in here that you can add those into. Don't be afraid to do that. You know, add a few little sketchy things in here and there. It's all good. Some are saying there's a weird sound on YouTube. <laughs> and I just locked my phone. <laughs> so to finish the center on this, I'm going to take a little bit of warm white. Oh, there is an echo. And I, I like just to put some fine little dots in. I don't want them to be huge or really close together, but I do like to have a few. And it's on the highlight side. And if they're nice and small, they're easy. It's easy to control them. And make sure that you take a few out over the petals. Doesn't have to be a lot, but a little. Just like that. Now you can do this with a little bit of warm white. If it's, you find it's too bright, just mix a little of that baby duck with it. Uh, Ramona is wondering if the gel pen smears when you seal it. Um, I have not had that problem, but I seal everything with a light coat of matte spray before I varnish. I haven't had any trouble with it smearing. I generally don't seal anything for about 24 hours anyway. I've brushed varnish over top of it without any issues, but that's not to say that it wouldn't or couldn't happen. But I generally try to avoid any possible issues by simply sealing everything with a matte spray prior to varnishing. It just eliminates the, the possibility of it making a mess. So I'm just adding those little tiny dots, and I do mean tiny, I'm just scattering them around, like so. Do you always spray seal your, and varnish your pieces? Yes, I seal everything. Because I use so many different things, I'm using ink, I'm using paint, I'm using gel pens. I just, to avoid any possible um, problems with ink smearing or or gel pen smearing or things like that. I always seal everything first with a just a couple of light coats of Decorart matte spray. Um, and one of my group members actually gifted me with a bottle of this amazing sealer. Now I can't remember where I put it. Oh, there it is. Um, is this, this final fix. 
And so I was testing it the other day to see if it worked on my gel pens and if it worked on um, the ink and whatnot. And it works beautifully. Um, I still haven't gotten it to the point where I can get a nice smooth finish right off the bat, but that's just me. I mean, I'm not um, completely comfortable with it yet. It is very easy to use. It has literally no odor. And I have to tell you that the fill, the finish of it is very nice. Just you have to be a little patient. Make sure it's laying flat. But um, absolutely fabulous. So uh, thank you, Miss Kathy. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I've been looking for some because I had heard a couple of people um, had tried it and were quite pleased with it. And But uh, locally, I have not been able to find it. Kathy McAllister was so sweet, sent me a bottle. So uh, thank you, Miss Kathy. This stuff is just bloody awesome. It's made with casein, beeswax, alcohol, and water. So, so far, I have been very impressed with how it's worked. And I did actually seal this piece with it. And it produced a really nice finish, I, I have to say. I'm a fan of a dead matte or a flat finish, so I was very happy with this one. Are you done with that there, Puff? So, yep. So there is my gel pen. I do like my gel pen. <laughs> yeah, you're done. You can't eat the cup there, puppy. Well, there's still some lamb in there. Eat the lamb, not the cup. Uh, or you. Or my fingers, please. <laughs> Miss Mays is a going concern. She's seven months old. Yep. And uh, what is it? Close to 60 pounds? Yeah, her last weigh-in was yeah. 55 pounds. 55 pounds, so yeah. She's grown like a bad weed. So the only thing we have left to tweak, finish up, is this leaf down here, and then we can tackle our butterfly. Oh, here's another question for you. Shoot. What's the difference between sealer and varnish? Um, when I spray seal something, it's essentially a fixative. It means that it, it creates a uniform surface. And it just makes sure that whatever you've put down stays on the surface. Um, it is not a varnish. That means it doesn't have any UV protectant in it. It also means that it's not a very thick application. And so it is, although it provides a similar service, it is not a full varnish. Most of the time I put one or two coats of varnish on and that is a nice tight finish and fully protects the paint. So Sealers seal in what you put on the surface. Yes. Varnish protects the surface. That's right. <laughs> Look at me go. Look at you go. More than just a hat rack. Uh... <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm going to show you a nifty little trick. Um, I really like this new leaf green. Linda Safranco knows how to get me. Oh, what is she making for dinner? She's making corn, <laughs> mushrooms, potatoes, and having crawfish boil. <gasps> yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> she brought it to you? Yes, she dropped it in my lap. Ew. <laughs> it's slimy. Gross. Yeah, it's very slimy. <laughs> So tonight we're having jerk chicken. Did, you haven't mentioned what we had for dinner last night, though. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. I made chicken tikka pizza. <laughs> that was yum. Yeah. It was essentially flatbread with chicken tikka sauce. And then wilted spinach with red onion. And then topped it with chicken tikka, the chicken that I cooked in the sauce or marinated in the sauce. And then um, topped it with a little bit of Greek yogurt and popped that in the oven. Mm -hmm. And I sprinkled it with uh, Indian mint. And it was, it was very good. 
It was surprisingly good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly did not expect it to be that good. Yeah. And I'd eat it again. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was good. I would prefer the chicken tikka. <laughs> That's just me. That, all, all those ingredients yeah. almost sound like a chicken shawarma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But, yeah. Chicken tikka pizza. Donna Baker says, I groomed a great Pyrenees the other day, and he literally slimed my grooming table. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, that's what you get. What <laughs> is chicken thing. tikka? Chicken tikka is an Indian dish. Um, it's made with some curry, some tomatoes, um, cardamom, cinnamon, and then uh, red chilies. And um, there's a little bit of uh, yogurt in it to fatten it, up. fatten it up a little bit. The chicken is marinated in all of those seasonings and oil and Indian mint or Asian mint. It's not like our peppermint at all. It has a, a peppery flavor to it as opposed to a mint flavor. And uh, it, it is delicious and is usually cooked um, on a grill or on an open flame. And uh, and then the sauce is made with the, the crushed tomatoes and, mm. and the seed, the marinade that you use to make the chicken. It's delicious. And particularly over rice or over uh, naan, served with naan. It's visually not that appealing. <laughs> <laughs> but Looks like a dog's breakfast. It does look like a dog's breakfast, but it's absolutely delicious. It's full of flavor. Jerk chicken for tonight. And jerk chicken tonight. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. Yes, of course. I was never chicken No. I changed that. <laughs> so I've got our little butterfly's got a base coat of yellow. I'm gonna set that aside to dry while we finish our leaves. Now Originally, when I painted this piece, I painted it so that we used um, just a margarita green to highlight these leaves. However, um, I have been playing with all sorts of nifty techniques because of these new colors. So I'm going to use a little bit of new leaf, which is that very bright green. It's quite lovely. And I'm going to put a little bit of that on the highlight areas of these leaves like that. Just a little float. Doesn't have to be full strength. Um, just in the areas where we're going to highlight. And I know you're probably wondering why is she doing this, but um, I'm essentially going to utilize this green to amplify the highlights and just make them a little bit more intense, a little more colorful, if you will. So I've got that little bit of that leaf green, that new leaf down. It's a pretty green, very, very pretty. And it has a really nice tone to it. So I've got that green down and I'm gonna dry that. Now, when I put this margarita over top of it, this green is going to become very vibrant. And it's going to have a similar effect to what we did with the petals using that saffron yellow. It's going to have a similar effect. So I'm going to dry this really well. And we're going to use a little bit of this margarita. And I found it just makes this color pop a little bit more. It amplifies it somehow. So there is my margarita. And that color just zings. It just 
becomes very, very lively. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't bury that first green, that new leaf. It doesn't bury it. It just seems to sing. And any time that you can amplify a color as opposed to change it, I think that that is a great way to go. And there we go. Now, having said that, I want you to put the two together. This one is done with margarita. Look at the difference in that highlight. Although this one's still a nice highlight, this one pops. And it's because we have that new leaf underneath it. We've got that high saturated green underneath it. Look at that pop. The comparison is really, really nice. I really like how that new leaf amplifies that that margarita it really gives it a nice look of course i discovered that after the fact after i finished this piece <laughs> so i'm really happy with that highlight i'm going to set this aside for a moment and we have our butterfly and our butterfly is going to get the same treatment that the sunflower did. So I'm going to use a little bit of that tea berry. Love this color, it's just so, so pretty. So a little bit of that tea berry, I'm going to float my butterfly. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Such a gorgeous color. That tea berry is just so, so pretty. Perfect reasoning for why you don't go back over a float once you've put it in there. I managed to mess it up. So I'm going to come back in. There we go. Good heavens. Ever have one of those days where you could mess up the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> Hello. That's today. Okay. So I've got that tea berry in the center of our little butterfly. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the flowers. I'm going to use a little bit of a schfaltum to deepen a little spot in here. Just a little bit to separate our petals. Just to give that a little more height. There. It's a weak float. You don't need a lot. And now I'm going to take my round brush and a little bit of that saffron yellow, that same yellow that we used on the sunflowers. And we're going to brush it right over top of everything. Just like that. I think I want it a little brighter towards the center, so I'm going to come in with a little more. I, think. I love this yellow. It's just yummy. So 
I'm going to bring in a little more tea berry. Just not quite bright enough yet. There we go. So there's that gorgeous orangey tone I wanted. Right over top of that. Yummy. Now you can make this as bright as you want. Um, the orange flame is going to give you that flame look to it, which I think is really pretty. And then we're going to start adding a little detail to our butterfly. We're going to paint in the body and the pattern on the outside edge of the wings is done with a little bit of lamp black. I'm going to thin out a little of that. So we're going to paint the body. And we just want a little bit of a black outline at the edge of these wings. like that. Now you can trace it on. There is a line drawing for this, but it's actually, I found it easier just to do this freehand. Trinity. Oh? Yeah. The Holy Trinity cooking, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Onions, garlic, and Tony Chattery. Tony Chattery's? <laughs> I make my own. Yeah. The Holy Trinity. <laughs> yeah. I make my own uh, jerk seasoning. I make my own Cajun seasoning. We have a really great recipe for a Cajun seasoning that you can make at home. It's delicious. What was that one? Uh, the Creole seasoning. Creole, yep. So there we go. Now I'm going to use my liner to put that line that separates the, the wings. That's what? Now, this is not a realistic butterfly. I'm just saying. Nor does it need to be. God only knows. Something's got her attention. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And then I'm going to show you how simple these details are because they're not rocket science by any stretch. Don't chew on the shirt. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of warm white on my palette. And I'm just using a basic liner. This is number one. And we're just going to put some little dots of white on that black border on the edge of the wings. It doesn't have to be meticulous. It's just a few little dots and they can be random. Neatness doesn't count. We're not looking for perfection here. So we've got our little white dots on. And then on the upper edge of the wing up here, I'm going to put three dots of white graduated. And then three dots of white here. Same thing here on this lower wing. And then we're going to put a highlight on the body as well. Mm -hmm. 
and this one is super simple. There's a little dot for the head and then just a stroke for the body. And then I'm going to dry that. And then I'm going to spatter my butterfly with some thinned lamp black. I'll just like him finish this way. So we'll just finish the butterfly with some black spatter. And we have a butterfly. We have just a couple more things to finish this off. I have some very generous friends. <laughs> Kathy McAllister sent me a goodie box the other day full of stuff. And I, I've been having so much fun with it. So one of the things that I have not used yet is this. This is called art glitter. Yeah. This is glue. It's not actually glitter. It's just glue. By a company named okay. Art Glitter? Named Art Glitter, yes. So I've been dying to try it, and this is the perfect time to try it. She's just looking at me. Ooh. I have a thing about glue. So I've got my little thingy. That's drying. I just got two of these little wood bits, little scrap bits for lack of a better term. Um, and I glued two of them together so that I have about a quarter of an inch height. And I'm going to let that dry because that's what's going to elevate our butterfly. Ooh. So I'm going to glue the butterfly to that little thing that I just glued together. Don't try and be sneaky here. <laughs> and I'm going to grab a stencil brush. Because we're going to use a little bit of lamp black to add a cancellation stamp. Now you can put the cancellation stamp wherever you choose. I have a preference for this lower corner here. I just think that's a good spot for it from a design standpoint. And I'm going to use a little bit of lamp black and my stencil brush. Now this does not have to be fully opaque. I mean if it ends up that way that's okay but it doesn't have to be. And I prefer to have the stamp go off. Some people like to have the whole stamp. I prefer to have it go off. And I need a little more paint. I'm a fan of this particular cancellation stamp. It works for me. And there we go. Now before I seal this, I'll go around and I'll erase all of the graphite lines, etc. And when this is completely dry, you can see I've got the butterfly. And I just used two of these little scraps. Wow, that dry glue dried fast. Not completely dry, but it set up fast. Wow. So then I will just take a little bit of that little tiny bit of that glue and then I will mount my butterfly just like so and again I like the butterfly to go off the page just slightly and I also don't want him to block that hole so that I can use a wire to hang that up and the only thing that I have left to do is to sign this
And there we have Letters from Home. Super fun piece. Denzo? I'm Denzo. <laughs> All right, let's get this going. Boom. Oh, there's a, it's a cool piece to paint. I love the surface. Um, my buddy Deb cut these out for me. Uh, I really fell in love with the 8x10 um, that I did at Christmas time. I love that piece. The, it, it's just so pretty with the, the sort of the vintage feel and the faux leather. And it looks really nice with that red. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> She's just doing weird things. Okay. So um, I liked it so much I asked her to make me a, a, an 8x8 eight eight and now a 6x6 six six, and now I've got some little 4x4s four and I'm just having way too much fun with the surface. I think it just lends itself really well to a whole bunch of different designs. Um, and I certainly got carried away because I did, <laughs> designed about six different pieces. Do you have wire? Do I have wire? Yeah. Yes, I have wire. They want to see how you would do the wire. Okay, I'm not sure where my wire is at the moment. I, but I do have wire. <laughs> Let's see I if we... Quick look and see where it is in my if she has it readily available, she might do it. If it's not readily available, then sorry. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah, it's not the one I want, though. But it'll do. It'll do? Yeah. I'll, I can use it. All right. I need uh, my cutters. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna switch camera again. Okey oh, look at that! My the wire I did want is in with my covers. Oh. Why? I have no idea. Who knew? Okay. My there we go. Seriously. My wire cutters. Right. So, um, I'm going to see if I can zoom out a little bit here. This one is a 19 gauge wire. This was a huge spool once upon a time. <laughs> I like wire for hanging things. So you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. It's just not so easy to come by it anymore. So generally I add three inches on either side. So if this is six, cut about a nine, nine and a half to, so six, six and three is nine. So cut a foot long piece, that's what you need. <laughs> Let you, couldn't do simple math to save my soul today. Add three inches, uh, okay, six, six is nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, 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 little. So I like to mount mine from the back. Because I kind of like to see the, the wire. I'm, a, I'm weird that way. So I mount it from the back. I don't want to have a big, long piece. So that's about all I really want to see. It's like four inches or so. Three or four inches. That's all I really need. And then on the piece that's sticking out, this is how I do mine. I'm going to just make a little curly cue like that. And I do the same thing on both sides. I, it's just me. I like the sort of rustic type. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. Easy peasy. And I, it's just because it curls that way, it's not sharp. And then I can hang it up anywhere I choose. Ta -da. And if you really want to, I mean, you could put a little bit of something something on there if you want but I prefer actually not I like the cleaner look of it but it's really that simple just use a pair of needle nose pliers to twist it into a little spiral that's it doesn't have to be weight bearing or anything well the only weight that it needs to hold is the weight of, <laughs> <laughs> of this that's it yeah. I think these would be cute like three of them in a row Sunflower. I just think they're fun sunflower then sunflower seeds and then Dead sunflower. <laughs> Bird. 
You could have the, the, the skeleton of the flower and then little birds feeding off it. I don't know. That'd be kind of cute. <laughs> Did you spatter everything? I didn't this time around. It has a, a little bit, but not much. <laughs> a light spatter will not go amiss. You could use a little bit of lamp black or a little bit of asphaltum. Or both. Or both. So have we? How many names have we got on that wheel today? I have two hundred and thirty-three names. Wow! So we are today. I'll just recap what we're giving away today. We have three sets, uh, three kits. Sorry, kits. Um, that includes the printed pattern, the surface, the stencil, and any little embellishments that are required for the kit. We are giving away three of those for a future project. And um, we're also adding a set of Dynasty Black Gold brushes to that. And of course, we always have a few other little extras that we throw in. There's even something from Tombow. So we have three of those to give away. Approximate value is about $50 US. So we are ready when you are, sir. I think I need to hold on to a lady. She's too much asleep. Yeah, she's out cold. Is she? Yeah. It's like having a newborn in the house. Well, more like a cranky teenager. Yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfectly timed. <laughs> All right, let's get the first name. I can't see the chat right now. So. I can't either. Here and it is. The first name is that guy. <laughs> Tara L. Ellis. Tara Ellis. Awesome. Congratulations, Tara. <laughs> Debbie, my, my body is crossed. <laughs> That's name number one. Name number two. <laughs> Janet Demon. Awesome. There we go. And number three. <laughs> and the last one is Kathleen Brown. Kathleen Brown. Okay, so the winners, you know what to do. Head over to the website at tracymoreau.net and click on the little speech bubble and send us your shipping information. <laughs> Makes it easier for us. We don't have to go hunting for it. We'd appreciate the, any little help. And then we will get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. Most of the time they go out first thing Monday. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So winners, Tara Ellis, Kathleen Brown, and Janet Demon. Bang. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, everybody, for joining us as you do every Saturday. Um, go and check out the website. We do have all of the surfaces are on sale this week. So um, go and check that out. And uh, we do have a coupon code tucked away in the, on the website somewhere. All you got to do is locate it. And I think you know where it is. It's not that much of a secret. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> so make sure you check out that. Um, some items are back ordered. They are, however, on their way to us right now. So um, they w you will not have to wait very long. So thank you so much for joining us today as you do every day. We greatly appreciate it. And if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Hit the big red subscribe button and uh, you'll be notified whenever we have new video or when we go live, which we do every Saturday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Next Saturday, we are painting bluebells, a nice little country piece in a, in a rusted enamel cup. I love this piece. It's a mate to a previous two designs that we've already done. So uh, come and join us for that. We're looking forward to it. And then uh, the following Saturday, we have a fun piece. We're doing this uh, little country piece. Uh, I can't remember if it's the egg or the milk, but we're doing one of them. So we have the patterns for that are also available on there. Those are simple ones. They're done on an 8 by 10 surface. You're going to love it. Canvas. And this is Maze. This is Maze trying to bite my hand. Hi, baby. You go ahead and eat him. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Everybody have a great weekend. Mwah. We love you. Stay safe. And pet your dog. And pet your dog. Can't forget that. No. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah.